Hi everyone, this is Alveoli e-learning exam series. These questions are for Alveoli e-learning students only for practice only and should not be replaced with classroom exams. The following questions and answers with their rationales are on medical surgical conditions of rheumatoid arthritis and osteoarthritis. Question 1. On a visit to the clinic, a client reports the onset of early symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis. The nurse should conduct a focused assessment for a. Limited motion of joints b. Deformed joints of the hands c. Early morning stiffness d. Rheumatoid nodules Correct answer is C. Early morning stiffness. Rationale. Initially, most clients with early symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis complain of early morning stiffness or stiffness after sitting still for a while. Question 2. The nurse teaches a client about heat and cold treatments to manage arthritis pain. Which of the following client statements indicates that the client still has a knowledge deficit? A. I can use heat and cold as often as I want. B. With heat, I should apply it for no longer than 20 minutes at a time. C. Heat-producing liniments can be used with other heat devices. D. 10 to 15 minutes per application is the maximum time for cold applications. Correct answer is C. Heat-producing liniments can be used with other heat devices. Rationale. Heat-producing liniment can produce a burn if used with other heat devices that could intensify the heat reaction. Heat and cold can be used as often as the client desires. However, each application of heat should not exceed 20 minutes, and each application of cold should not exceed 10 to 15 minutes. Application for longer periods results in the opposite of the intended effect, vasoconstriction instead of vasodilation with heat, and vasodilation instead of vasoconstriction with cold. Question 3. Your patient has arthritis that affects the weight-bearing joints such as the hands, knees, hips, and spine. This type of arthritis is most likely a. Rheumatoid arthritis b. Osteoarthritis Correct answer is b. Osteoarthritis Rationale Osteoarthritis is a form of arthritis that causes deterioration of the articular hyaline cartilage of the bones. It affects the weight-bearing joints. This can include the hands, knees, hips, and spine because these joints experience a lot of stress. Question 4. Which statement is false concerning rheumatoid arthritis? A. Rheumatoid arthritis most commonly affects the fingers and wrist. B. Rheumatoid arthritis is different from osteoarthritis in that it doesn't affect other systems of the body. C. Rheumatoid arthritis can occur at any age, 20 to 60 year old most commonly. D. Ankylosis can occur in severe cases of rheumatoid arthritis. Correct answer is B. Rheumatoid arthritis is different from osteoarthritis in that it doesn't affect other systems of the body. Rationale This statement is false. Rheumatoid arthritis is different from osteoarthritis in that it does affect other systems of the body. IA is systemic, while OA only affects the joints. This is why a fever and anemia can present in IA. Question 5. You are assessing the diagnostic testing results for a patient that has rheumatoid arthritis. What result is not an indicator of this disease? A. Elevated erythrocyte sedimentation B. X-ray imaging showing osteophyte formation C. Positive C-reactive protein 
D. Positive rheumatoid factor. Correct answer is B. X-ray imaging showing osteophyte formation. Rationale. This is found in osteoarthritis not rheumatoid arthritis. Osteophytes, bone spurs, are only found in OA. Question 6. During a head-to-toe assessment of a patient with arthritis, you note bony outgrowths on the proximal interphalangeal joint. These outgrowths are known as and occur in a. Hebedon's node, osteoarthritis b. Bouchard's node, rheumatoid arthritis c. Hebedon's node, rheumatoid arthritis d. Bouchard's node, osteoarthritis Correct answer is D. Bouchard's node, osteoarthritis. Rationale Bouchard's node are bony outgrowths on the proximal interphalangeal joint, middle joint of the finger and occur in osteoarthritis. Hebedon's node occur on the distal interphalangeal joint, finger joint closet to the fingernail. Question 7. A patient is newly diagnosed with osteoarthritis. Which medication below is not ordered to treat this condition? A. NSAIDs. B. Intraarticular corticosteroids. C. DMARDs. D. Glucosamine. Correct answer is C. DMARDs. Rationale. DMARDs, disease-modifying anti-rheumatic drugs, are ordered in rheumatoid arthritis not osteoarthritis. These drugs suppress the immune system from attacking the joint along with helping slow down the destruction of the disease on the joints and bones. All the other options are drugs that can be prescribed in OA. Question 8. A client is in the acute phase of rheumatoid arthritis. Which of the following should the nurse identify as lowest priority in the plan of care? A. Relieving pain. B. Preserving joint function. C. Maintaining usual ways of accomplishing tasks. D. Preventing joint deformity. Correct answer is C. Maintaining usual ways of accomplishing tasks. Rationale. Maintaining usual ways of accomplishing tasks would be the lowest priority during the acute phase. Pain relief is a high priority during the acute phase because pain is typically severe and interferes with the client's ability to function. Preserving joint function and preventing joint deformity are high priorities during the acute phase. Question 9. The teaching plan for the client with rheumatoid arthritis includes rest promotion. Which of the following would the nurse expect to instruct the client to avoid during rest periods? A. Proper body alignment. B. Elevating the part. C. Prone lying positions. D. Positions of flexion. Correct answer is D. Positions of flexion. Rationale. Positions of flexion should be avoided to prevent loss of functional ability of affected joints. Question 10. After teaching the client with rheumatoid arthritis about measures to conserve energy in activities of daily living involving the small joints, which of the following, if stated by the client, would indicate the need for additional teaching? A. Pushing with palms when rising from a chair. B. Holding packages close to the body. C. Sliding objects. D. Carrying a laundry basket with clenched fingers and fists. Correct answer is D. Carrying a laundry basket with clenched fingers and fists. Rationale. 
Carrying a laundry basket with clinched fingers and fists is not an example of conserving energy of small joints. Question 11. After teaching the client with severe rheumatoid arthritis about prescribed methotrexate, rheumatrex, which of the following statements indicates the need for further teaching? A. I will take my vitamins while I'm on this drug. B. I must not drink any alcohol while I'm taking this drug. C. I should brush my teeth after every meal. D. I will continue taking my birth control pills. Correct answer is A. I will take my vitamins while I'm on this drug. Rationale Because some over-the-counter vitamin supplements contain folic acid, the client should avoid self-medication with vitamins while taking methotrexate, a folic acid antagonist. Because methotrexate is hepatotoxic, the client should avoid the intake of alcohol, which could increase the risk for hepatotoxicity. Methotrexate can cause bone marrow depression, placing the client at risk for infection. Therefore, meticulous mouth care is essential to minimize the risk of infection. Contraception should be used during methotrexate therapy and for eight weeks after the therapy has been discontinued because of its effect on mitosis. Methotrexate is considered teratogenic. Question 12. A 25-year-old client taking hydroxychloroquine, Plaquenil, for rheumatoid arthritis reports difficulty seeing out of her left eye. Correct interpretation of this assessment finding indicates which of the following. A. Development of a cataract. B. Possible retinal degeneration. C. Part of the disease process. D. The coincidental occurrence. Correct answer is B. Possible retinal degeneration. Rationale. Difficulty seeing out of one eye, when evaluated in conjunction with the client's medication therapy regimen, leads to the suspicion of possible retinal degeneration. The possibility of an irreversible retinal degeneration caused by deposits of hydroxychloroquine, Plaquenil, in the layers of the retina requires an ophthalmologic examination before therapy is begun and at six-month intervals. Question 13. A client with rheumatoid arthritis tells the nurse, I know it is important to exercise my joints so that I won't lose mobility, but my joints are so stiff and painful that exercising is difficult. Which of the following responses by the nurse would be most appropriate? A. You are probably exercising too much. Decrease your exercise to every other day. B. Tell the physician about your symptoms. Maybe your analgesic medication can be increased. C. Stiffness and pain are part of the disease. Learn to cope by focusing on activities you enjoy. D. Take a warm tub bath or shower before exercising. This may help with your discomfort. Correct answer is D. Take a warm tub bath or shower before exercising. This may help with your discomfort. Rationale Superficial heat applications, such as tub baths, showers, and warm compresses, can be helpful in relieving pain and stiffness. Exercises can be performed more comfortably and more effectively after heat applications. The client with rheumatoid arthritis must balance rest with exercise every day, not every other day. Typically, large doses of analgesics, which can lead to hepatotoxic effects, are not necessary. Learning to cope with the pain by refocusing is inappropriate. End of questions. Watch out for more possible exams questions on Alveoli eLearning exam series. Subscribe, share and comment on Alveoli eLearning YouTube page. For more simple tutorials and effective exams preparation, contact Alveoli eLearning course instructor on 
Call or WhatsApp on plus 233549556116. Thank you.